Welcome to Pioneer Island Sports Extra. I'm Jacob. And I'm Madeline. And I'm Gary. And boy, do we have a lot to talk about this week. The Titans had a flurry of free agency offseason moves this past week. The biggest move was the loss of Derrick Henry. Guys, what do you think about that? I think it was a good move for the Ravens. I think Derrick Henry going to the Ravens makes the Ravens a top three offense. I mean, just imagine him with Lamar out there. It's going to be deadly killer. Lamar's going to be able to roll out and have Derrick Henry on the option, especially with the read options, the triple options, all like the options that Harbaugh likes to run. <clears throat> um, Derrick Henry, I think, will, will flourish and shine in that offense. I think Baltimore instantly becomes championship contenders while Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs look to get that third. I think it is a – we're definitely going to see a championship rematch between the Ravens and the Chiefs again. There's no question in my mind. And I think it'll be a much even closer and a better score because the Ravens will now have that offense to compete with the Chiefs' top-tier defense. Well, who did the Titans replace Derrick Henry with? They signed Tony Pollard to a three-year, $24 million contract. What do you think about that? I think that's – it's an interesting move to say at that. So, Tony Pollard just recently signed his multi-year extension with the Cowboys, right? And then when Zeke left and went to the Patriots, Zeke didn't really shine at all. So, it was Tony Pollard's moment to like, hey, let's get in there and shine. And then he gets injured. He never really got his opportunity. He comes back later in the season. He puts up average numbers because of his injury. And Jerry Jones wants to cut him. It really just doesn't make any sense. But – a good thing for the Titans, welcome them in. I mean, they definitely need help with the running back room. they got a two-headed spear now with Spears and uh, Pollard. So it'll be interesting to see what happens, but there's there needs to be a lot of improvement on Tennessee's offense in general before we can actually see if they're going to take it far. Well, the Titans did sign a four-year contract for $92 million with Calvin Ridley. What do you think about that? I think it's a great move. They, they struggled in the passing game. They really have struggled in the passing game for a lot of years, really since they uh, traded A.J. Brown away. Honestly, it probably started when they uh, didn't re-sign Jonu Smith after the 2020 season. And obviously, Corey Davis not being there either is a not, not a great situation to be in. So now that you look at their receivers, they have Traylon Burks. Don't forget about him. Uh, Calvin Ridley, like you just mentioned. And uh, now Tony Pollard. I feel like the offense is, has a lot of youth. And I feel like once you build with a brand new group of t uh, teammates like uh, Will Levis leading the charge, I feel like the Titans could reboot a nice uh, system, even with their new head coach. I feel like a lot of be a new beginning for the Titans was the right way to go. Well, let, well, me, let me ask you something about that. So with, with the Titans having a new head coach, how do, you, how do you feel about beginning with a new head coach, getting rid of Vrabel? I, I'm not a personally Titans fan, but hearing it out from Titans fans, right? Like, why would you get rid of Vrabel? Why move on to Brian Callahan, a first-year starter head coach, coming from the Bengals' offensive passing game? To me, it just makes no sense. Well, this may sound personally against Ravel. I don't have anything personally against him. But I just feel like he wasn't, he wasn't a fit. The Titans really need to be able to move the ball as opposed to continuously running the ball with Derrick Henry. I feel like Derrick Henry didn't have the, te the teammates around him to watch him have the same success that he had in the 2020 season. Callahan was a, an offensive coordinator, and you saw what the Bengals did, what they did to get to the Super Bowl, almost get back to the Super Bowl. Obviously, Burrow got hurt this year, but... That, that's nothing against Callahan. The Titans need to be able to move the ball. Rabel was not an offensive guy. I feel like moving the focus to be an offensive team was the way to go. Okay. Well, what do you think about the Titans signing Mason Rudolph? Do you think he'll come for Will Levis's lead quarterback position? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't really necessarily think so. Will Levis, I mean, he's a top five draft pick, right? No, he's a sec second round. They got second a second round, round because yeah. they drafted uh, or traded it, actually. Um, so... Levis being that second round draft pick, he signed the four years, not on the five or fifth year, hasn't picked up yet. Being in his second year, um, he was injured last year just a little bit, right, towards the end of the year. Um, I don't think it's that much of a big deal. Sure, Mason Rudolph came in last year, took the Steelers to the playoffs when they were at their, one of their lowest points of the season. Mason Rudolph has proven time and time again he's not a starter, though. He's a very good backup. Yeah. He'll come in and play for you when you need it, but he's not a starter. So they're, I think they'll, they'll keep, on, keep on rolling with Levis, see where it goes. But if Levis can't perform in two, three years, he'll be out the door too. I agree. Okay. In other news, the Preds are looking to clinch the, the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. They're at a 98% <laughs> chance right now, which is really interesting. How do, how do you feel about that? The Predators are an absolute role right now. Since they lost 9-2 to two to Dallas at home at Bridgestone Arena, they've only had two, two losses, and those both came in overtime. So they've had points in 14 consecutive games. And as you just mentioned, they're headed to the playoffs. Pretty interesting. All right, well, let's move on to the UT men's basketball. All right, we're going about to go into March Madness. How are we feeling about that? I'm I, glad they lost. 
Tennessee, Tennessee's on a two-game losing streak. If you look back to their uh, regular season finale versus Kentucky, Dalton Connect had his best game of the season, maybe his whole entire basketball life. I don't really know. But he had 40 points, which out of 81 is almost exactly half of the team's points. Tennessee needs more balance. They did not have any balance against Mississippi State in the quarterfinals of the uh, SEC tournament, which is why they lost. And for Tennessee to get a two seed was kind of disappointing. Obviously, you want them to get a number one seed, but guess what? You know who they're playing first round? St. Peter's. What is St. Peter's known for? Their strut of destiny. Two years ago, they took down Kentucky, Purdue, Murray State, and ultimately ended up losing to North Carolina. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't overlook St. Peter's for Tennessee. Okay. Who are you picking to win it all this year, March Madness? If you could pick one team, guys, one team out of the 64 that are in this tournament, what are we doing? I will have to go with Alabama because I'm an Alabama fan. Okay. Roll Tide. Who are you rolling with? <laughs> so I don't really watch, I don't pay much attention to college men's basketball. Um, college, I'm an Oklahoma fan, football fan. But other than that, I'm just, I like to look at FanDuel and see what's there. I think I'm going to take either, I've been looking at Houston a lot or one of my dark horses, Colorado. Mm. I'm from Colorado, and I wouldn't even have picked them, so that's crazy. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to say either, if you want me to pick one team, when you think you can't, you can't repeat in Phoenix. I love to see that. Well, this wraps up this edition of Pioneer Ion Sports. I'm Madeline. I'm Jacob. And I'm Garrett. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.